Right, today we're looking at agonist and antagonist muscles. Muscles always tend to work in pairs so as to create movement. And when one muscle contracts to generate the movement, there's an opposite muscle that relaxes to allow the movement to occur. So the muscles tend to work in pairs and we're going to have a look at these and it's quite important that you understand how this works. First we'll look at the agonist muscle. This is the muscle that contracts, it shortens. So here we've got um, this muscle up here, the bicep muscle, which is contracting and shortening. It's creating the movement. And um, another word for it is prime mover. So the agonist muscle contracts to produce the movement. It shortens to allow this to happen, and is the, another word for it is prime mover. Now here we're still looking at the, um, at the upper arm. But the arm um, this time has extended. So we've gone from our bicep curl, whoopsie, I'm moving the wrong thing, and the arm has extended. So the antagonist muscle is now the bicep muscle and the agonist is the tricep muscle over here. The agonist muscle being the bicep muscle here, it, it, it's opposite the agonist, the tricep over here. It relaxes, the bicep relaxes, lengthens, and allows movement to occur. It can often be used also to control the speed of the movement so the arm doesn't flop down suddenly. So this is the antagonist muscle, the bicep muscle and the agonist is the tricep. In our previous picture with the bicep curl, the bicep was the agonist muscle. So muscles can be either agonist or antagonist. They just or they always work in pairs. Right, I hope you've got an understanding of how the agonist and antagonist muscles work together. Um, the agonist, remember, is sometimes called a prime mover, but they are interchangeable. They can switch around depending on what they you know whether they're shortening. Or lengthening. I want you to answer question two with the bicep curl and here's a very good diagram for you to look at to help you uh, complete that question. It just about gives you the answers so look very carefully at it. So there's the movement occurring at the elbow and in the first picture you can see the bicep curl, the lifting phase of the bicep and that action there the movement is called flexion. So you, we've learned about that before. That movement is flexion where the arrow, the angle in there gets smaller. The agonist muscle for flexion in the um, upper arm is the bicep muscles. And the antagonist muscles are the triceps and you can see where the triceps have lengthened and relaxed. The other picture is also very good. It shows you the extension of the elbow where the arm has straightened and now the biceps are the antagonist muscle and the triceps are contracting and shortening and they are the agonist muscles. What I want you to look at in this picture in the first picture in particular is the where the muscle inserts especially this bicep muscle there's this circle there where the muscle inserts into the into the forearm I think that's into the radius was it the ulnar muscle ulnar bone the oh let me have a look I think it might be the radius being the one on the following the thumb. So it looks like the radius bone, it's, yes it is, it's labelled. 
the bicep inserts into the radius bone and that is where it pulls up from there. All right, so the biceps, the origin of the bicep is up in the upper arm and the humerus up here, clavicle and scapula, the insertion there. And that's the origin of it, and then it inserts into the forearm in the radius bone. So that's how, when the muscle shortens, it lifts up that radius bone to create flexion. Right, now that you've got an understanding of agonist and antagonist muscles, I want you to apply it to the following weight training exercises. Question 3, halfway down page 57. There's three pictures there of a leg curl, bench press and calf raises. In the leg curl, I want you to be able to identify the movement. That is the movement in here, that angle there. Remember, see the legs have been brought up and made that angle smaller. So that is the angle there that you're looking at. The agonist muscles, there's two of them. And the antagonist muscle, there's one. So you need to refer back to one of the previous lessons, um, particularly on pages... Oh, page 54 and page 53. So that might help you to complete that. You're, and then you're also to name the antagonist muscle. With the bench press, you're looking at the shoulder joint. So that is the angle in there. We're looking at. I better undo that, it's a bit of a mess. Whoopsie. No, everything else is moving. Whoops, I can't undo it. So, um, you're looking at the shoulder joint in there, and I want you to be able to identify the movement and the muscles. I'll give you, for the agonist, I'll give you one hint that we call it the anterior deltoid. That's one of the three muscles. That is, are the agonist muscles. And the antagonist muscle, I want you to call it the posterior, posterior deltoid. Because the deltoid is a very large muscle with many insertions. So the deltoid muscle, it's anterior deltoid for agonist, plus two other muscles that you've got to work out what they are. And the antagonist, it's posterior deltoid plus three other muscles you are to name. And the last one is calf raises. And there's a lovely demonstration of it there. And it's the movement from here to that that we're looking at. Identify that movement. And for the agonists, it's two muscles are involved. And the antagonist, it's one muscle. You complete that for your homework, and if you've got any questions, we'll have a look at it in class tomorrow. You can ask me some questions then.